Today on the Expert Showcase, we're going behind the episode with John Burke, and we've been talking about tools for life. And welcome to Expert Showcase Behind the Episode. And I'm going to start this one off a little different and, and just warn you, when you watch the episode, and, and I know you will, you're going to hear Dr. Mark refer to coaches as tools. Now, I, I know you really didn't mean that coaches are tools, Mark. I know you meant something different. I, I guess I have to use the word instruments, instruments of change, not tools for change, but because you did, but you, somebody's used that word, terminology and, and, and as a pejorative you know I mean it as an instrument of change I know but I just found it extremely funny when you said it oh, and, uh, uh, I, I did have that thought as I said and I was like hey it's too late it's out and thank goodness the control room was what why do you think I was muted because I was having fun with the fact that you had just called coach you had just referenced coach so coaches don't worry he doesn't That's really it's not an insult a tool. Not me. you know I'm the only tool in the group here so anyway he doesn't really think <laughs> tool but so over there is our great interviewer our awesome interviewer dr mark cosman above is another one of our epic guests i like epic i think we're going epic, to epic right. again uh john, john burke um and mark john take it away and 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 i'll sit back and shut up now okay <laughs> so john you and i chatted about this but to reorient our audience uh, just to to let them know what's going on here you and i are going to have a little chat here about you know the behind the episode here and a little bit about your background while you and i are doing that chris is typing away and taking some notes that you and i can't see but the audience can see up on screen uh, so he's kind of sharing that with them and then uh, we will flip it over to Chris to give us some feedback and try to pull some of these thoughts together into some some good teachable moments because we're all you know coaches consultants expert professionals who are out here trying to build our business uh, enhance our visibility establish our credibility and and try to position ourselves as a real authority in our, in our own niche that said John um, welcome to behind the episode <laughs> Well, thank you for having me. Uh, our pleasure. So, John, um, I, I always like to start this uh, behind the episode off by getting a little bit of background about you know our guest and and uh, how you came to this world of coaching and to to really trying to help people. I I don't know a lot about your background, so I'm looking forward to hearing it. But I, I heard some interesting things in our in our pre-show chat. So, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you came to this world. Well, once upon a time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, waiting no, for no. mom and dad. I, That's right, mom and dad. Well, the I was waiting and, for know, mom and dad. Little of this, a little of that, and now you're out. <laughs> and that's how I began. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, um, uh, it, it, it's been a long journey, and it, um, I've been involved in uh, scouting. I uh, was a uh, Boy Scout leader for years. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, worked in a uh, supermarket industry uh, for for 30 plus years, mm. um, and uh, I am uh, currently uh, retired from that. Uh, I'm a retired bricklayer, and um, I'm also a, a chaplain in the Philadelphia prison system. Interesting. Okay. Yes. That must be difficult, challenging, and fascinating work. Yes, it is. It is all of that um, is it's very interesting, and uh, my whole concept has changed uh, mm. about inmates after going in and, and doing a, a volunteer basis. You know, first of all, and then um, and so I'm uh, kind of like gearing myself towards helping as much as I can in the uh, the system and also outside the system. Excellent. Well, yeah, I would imagine some of these tools for life that we're going to cover in, in the what the people will see in the episode that we just recorded together are probably you know extremely valuable just with coping with the the, the whole strange world of, of of prison, isn't it? Uh, sure. Yeah, it, uh, and, I, and I've been having some success uh, with the, the tools of life uh, in, in in the jails. They um, um, they they go in thinking one way. Mm -hmm. And the key is to get them thinking another way coming out. Mm -hmm. and that's where the tools come in. Right. But if they don't change, you know, nothing's going to change. Right. 
And obviously, it sounds like you've been also then creating a bridge between you know the concepts, the things that you're you're finding working with inmates. And of course, you know some of our viewers are hopefully sitting back saying, "Well, I'm not an inmate. You know, what, what does John Burke have to share with me?" And uh, you know, th there are universal truths, right? And and often they're discovered in these intense kind of environments, right? Uh, so yeah. I would imagine that's part of what you're up to, isn't it? Yes, it's uh, yeah the, the the three tools, and they're just three of many, mm -hmm. you know. But they're for me, they're the key factors on uh, on being successful mm -hmm. um, in in life, in relationship, you know, in in work. Uh, you can use it anywhere. Absolutely, yeah, and uh, they, they are truly universal tools, universal principles, and, and uh, you know, if, if you're wondering what the three tools are, hey, we're not going to tell you right now. That's the tease. You have to stay tuned and watch John's episode that's coming up shortly that we just recorded, and he will share with you those three tools for life. Um, see, a little, little foreshadowing, a little tease, you know, keep them on the line there, you know? Sure, why not? <laughs> Exactly. So you you um, have had a, a varied career, so a lo long career, um, you know, and then a, a, this is a new career uh, for you in, in working in the prison system. How long have you actually been doing that now? Uh, as a uh, paid chaplain for two years, been okay. volunteering for uh, about four years. Okay, so yeah, you've been there actually quite a while, so it's not a brand new thing. It's it's something you've got some depth in even there, and so, and then you're you're obviously also have your coaching practice uh, that you've built through the John Maxwell uh, group, right? Yes, yes, and I've been I've been coaching all my life. Yeah, you know, um, it wasn't until I was introduced to the John Maxwell team program that I realized that right. I'm a professional. That's yeah. right. You, you've had a lifetime of training. You just didn't have a name for it uh, until you discovered the proper name for it, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You mentioned scouting way back. I mean, of course, there's there's a ton of coaching that you're doing if you're uh, involved in scouting, and uh, especially if you're leading groups and things like that. So. Uh, uh, all along, so yeah. So let's shift gears a wee bit here, and let's talk because again, our our audience is often looking for some guidance, some strategies, some some stories of what has helped you in just in terms of. Chris and I like to talk about these three main, uh, you know, things. I mean, trying to gain visibility, trying to really establish uh, yourself as a credible source of, of your expertise, and then really ultimately trying to position yourself as an authority in your in your niche. What has been working in terms of building your business and and the visibility of your business for you? Well, utilizing the three tools. <laughs> number yes. one, practicing what you preach. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh -huh. And number two, just uh, just uh, making yourself available. Mm -hmm. to, to, you know, see, we're we have to listen to people. You know, when, when you know a stranger on the street, you can help out. You can give them information um, if you listen. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we hear people, but we don't listen. Yeah. And for me, that's been working for me, listening to people and then going out and speaking to them, giving them, you know, my business card, my web page, and mm -hmm. just uh, uh, word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Word of mouth is the best advertisement. So, yeah, absolutely. Word of mouth referrals are always the strongest uh, source of business you can get. But you mentioned public speaking as well. So you, you, you speak to, to various groups. Is that true? Yes. Yes. Uh, corporations. And um, charitable organizations. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it could be you know from five to five hundred. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter on the size. Right, right. But it helps you get the word out. Helps you kind of engage with people. Helps them understand what you're all about. And uh, and then I, I assume that from that you you uh, have some people who want to follow up with you and, and yes. maybe work one on one and so forth. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right. Well, I think that sets the stage pretty well for me to uh, to segue over to Chris here because I know he's been listening and I, I know he's going to you know ask you some some interesting questions about what you're doing with this content that you're creating when you're public speaking and and when you're doing things uh, on online and on the web. So, uh, Chris, uh, I'm going to turn this over to you. You you know John well and you know the John Maxwell group well. So I I will uh, I will step back and I will you know 
hear what you guys have to say. <laughs> Sounds good. So first of all, John, thanks again for, for being on. It was great. It was great recording the episode. It's great listening to you talk. Um, I know we've talked a few times before, and uh, it's always great to hear even more of your background. Um, one of the things that I want every... There's a couple of things that, that you said that I want people who are viewing this video to really get and, and understand. Um, everything that you did, whether it was a Boy Scout leader, a bricklayer, um, I'm going to guess even in the supermarket industry. In fact, before I make this comment, let me ask, what did you do in the supermarket industry? I worked uh, many departments. Um, the, the last department I worked before I retired was seafood. And I was a seafood manager. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And the and I'm sure you didn't start off as a manager when you got into the no. industry. That you worked your way up and you built a solid foundation first, and then yes. worked your way up. Yeah, my it's interesting you mentioned the supermarket industry because my mom, who passed away a, a couple of years ago, one of her last official job was a, was working for a food broker. And it's funny, you probably know this this position. Uh, a lot of people watching might not. The short, short answer is um, a lot of times the shelves you see stocked at the store aren't all through merchandise the store buys and warehouses and ships it in their own trucks. So there's things mm -hmm. that are on the shelf from, um, you know, from other manufacturers and everything. And that was kind of her job to go around to a certain amount of stores and go in and do inventory and do all this other stuff, do the orders and everything else. So, uh, so, uh, you know, I, I knew we had a lot in common, but that, that, you know, it's just another interesting connection. But what I find very, very interesting is if you look at everything you did, you you were focused on building great foundations as a scout leader that helps that helps boys build great foundations to be men when you worked in the supermarket industry you built a great foundation for yourself and eventually worked your way up to be a man as a, owned a concreting company down here in philly so we're going to talk more later we probably we probably so. know more people than we know together <laughs> um, and now you're in a you're working in the philadelphia prison system and you're helping inmates who are on a shaky ground to begin with build a solid foundation for the future. The reason I bring all of that up is that you talk later on about training for your, you know, basically you've been in training for what you're doing now all your life. So I posed a, I posed a question in the notes and I pose it to, to everyone watching this verbally now. What have you been training all your life to do that you didn't even, that you didn't even realize it? Um, so John, let me ask you this. You know, we talked a little bit about this and I think I might have asked you this, but I'd like our audience to hear. Um, you've been training I'll say unknowingly all your life to do what you're doing now. In other words, you were in this this foundational building business. What was the seminal moment that you went, oh, you know, I've got all of these years of experience. Here's an opportunity. I need to now turn this into a business and, and become a and become a coach and, and do and and help people with their lives like this. Um, that was I realized that with the uh, the John Maxwell, I was introduced to that program, the John Maxwell team. And at that moment, that's when the light went off. You know, like, hey, I am a coach. <laughs> I am a leader. I, you know, I am these things that John Maxwell talks about. And so that's, it was like my aha moment. Excellent. And that's why I do what I do now. Excellent. So you really resonated with the John Maxwell team. And, and when you heard about the opportunity, you said, oh, it's kind of like one of those things where you smack yourself on the head and go, okay, <laughs> yeah, I, I get <laughs> right? I've been there. <laughs> oh, that's that's excellent. The other thing I love what you said is that listening is a great is a great first step to building to building visibility. You know, we talk about visibility, credibility, and authority, and I want to get into kind of a little bit how you've marketed yourself now, and then also ask you, ask you know, some <coughs> questions you have about how you might be able to market yourself in the future. Anything that you're so I'm prepping I'm prepping you this because we didn't ask you this before, and so I'm prepping you for this now so if there's anything you're comfortable enough asking and sharing with our, our viewers we'll be more than happy to answer it um, but one of the things I love is when you say listening is the first step to building visibility you know we, we talk a lot when we say visibility credibility and authority that you have to know your ideal your ideal client like I talked with one of our future clients this morning um, and they said you know, they said, you know, we know our audience. We know exactly what we have to do in a video to get them to watch it. We know exactly what we have to do, you know, and if we don't, 
you know, in fact, they're, they are a, they're a guest on expert. They were a guest on expert showcase and they put out the video and they're like, man, we didn't get a lot of response. Okay. Wait a minute. Let me, let me do some things. I know what I'll get our audience. And the minute this person said that they know their ideal audience. And the only way you can find out is by listening. You know, you, you have to, you have to, I mean, not, not the only way, but you have to be able to listen to figure out what your ideal audience wants. So I think that's, that's, that's great. So let me turn this back to you, John, for a second. From, from either visibility, credibility, or authority, from a marketing standpoint, um, first of all, what else have you done now besides word of mouth marketing? Have you done any blogs? Have you done anything else to help build, um, to help you know, build and take out and promote your the coaching side of your business any further? Um, the blogs and stuff, no, I haven't because I'm a computer lower. lower. Um, if, if I had to have a contest between me and the caveman, I'd come and check it. <laughs> See, you know, Chris, he practices what he preaches. He looks in the mirror and he's brutally honest. <laughs> well, that's, that's it. And the, and the great news is he knows his, his strengths. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, I'm just talking with him, and it's funny because you can tell. And, and John, I'm going to throw this out here. You were, you were uh, I'm guessing you were probably born here in the Philadelphia area, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm kind of joking. Mark wasn't, he's an outsider. That's okay. That's we, right. We, I'm a transplant. <laughs> we, we let him in the club every now and then. But the, the whole point is, is that for those of you who are from outside the Philadelphia area, that's what I love about interviewing John today is he just brutally Philadelphia honest. And he's not, you know, we have a lot of great guests that come on that, that are really, you know, eloquent and sugarcoat things a lot. John's a good Philadelphia hardworking guy. He's like, you know, this he is tells it. it like it is. He tells it like it is. That's somebody you want in a coach and in a mentor, somebody to help you, you know, get your life further. And that's why, John, you're going to do great things in the, you know, it definitely in the, uh, you know, in, in the prison system to help, you know, to help act help offenders who are rehabbing, who are rehabbing themselves. Um, so let me ask you this, John, and this, I know this is putting you on the spot and feel free to say, oh, he'll answer it. I mean, he's from Philly. He answers it. <laughs> We're from Philly. We can talk like this. But the, the whole right. point is you said the, the technology. So if you had somebody to help take care of the technology side of things and you could just sit and talk or you could sit and say, look, here are my thoughts, you know, make quote unquote, make me look good um, over time. Is that something that, you know, you could see you could see value in doing it and having? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Um it, it takes more than me to be successful, you know, and that's one of the other tools. It's just, that's right, John. I was going to say, a really smart guy recently told me it's not all about you. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And, you know, uh, to have success with one, who are you going to share that with? Yourself. You know, so you have to, you know, share. You have to you know, be able to have other people incorporate other people to help you. You know, uh, like um, uh, Henry Ford. You know, they all thought he was nuts. <laughs> you know, and they were going to. Uh, they took him to court. His family took him to court, and the judge asked him. Um, you know, I, I forget the, the question he was asked him, and he says, no, "I don't know, but hang on." And he asked his secretary or somebody that he pays to know these answers. You know, so the judge said he's not nuts. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I can uh, yeah, if I can find people to to help me to be more successful then yeah, great. Awesome. Well, Mark, you know what? I, I don't think there's a better way I could kind of leave this portion of the segment than to, than to kind of, you know, than to leave on the note that John just, just talked about, about having other people part of your team. So uh, before, I, before I wrap this up, I'm going to throw it up to you and John for your final comments and final thoughts, and then we'll uh, roll and then I'll wrap this up and we'll roll the tape. Sure. Well, John, it's been great having you as our expert. Uh, people are about to see the, the Tools for Life episode that we just did together, um, and I think they're going to get a ton of, uh, of useful, down-to-earth, you know, helpful information uh, to, to orient themselves in the right way. Uh, you've really kind of transformed uh, a, a long and varied career and, and distilled it down to, you know, a set of skills and discovering that, that it... Uh, 
it fits a whole new career for you. It's, uh, you know, so it's been been great having you. Any closing thoughts you have for your fellow coaches and consultants out there before we actually show them your episode? Uh, the only thing I have to say is don't be intimidated by the size of your problem. You can, just like an elephant, you can take one bite at a time, and uh, to accomplish whatever it is that you're you're setting forth to uh, to do. Wise words indeed, John. So, John, thanks very much. I'm going to turn it over to Chris here to do a bit of a wrap-up for us, before, and then we will, as we like to say, roll the tape, even though we don't have any tape. <laughs> exactly. So, first and foremost, you want to stick around and watch the episode we created with John. It's going to give you uh, three, uh, three of the most important tools for life that you're ever going to get. And if you're a coach or consultant, realize after watching this episode with John that you'd like to be a featured guest on the Expert Showcase, which would normally be a $375 value that, that we're giving you for free, uh, just go over to expertshowcase.com, click on the big yellow Apply button, send us your information, we'll take a look at it. If we feel you're a good fit to be our next guest on the Expert Showcase, we'll be in contact and we'll have you on. And finally, if you are a coach or consultant and want to build visibility, credibility, and authority through the power of video and video content marketing, head over to videocontent.agency, check out the three packages we have to offer, pick the one that's right for you, and then get in contact with us. Let's see if we're a good fit to work together. If we are, we'll set up a plan that's customized to you and help you build the visibility, credibility, and authority you need to be the leader in your niche. And now, without any further ado, Mark, I'm going to roll the tape. <laughs> Today on Expert Showcase, John Burke joins us and he's going to share with us some tools for life. John Burke, welcome to Expert Showcase and thanks for being our uh, our guest experts uh, expert. You're not two people, you're one person expert today. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Well, glad to have you. Uh, for the sake of our audience, we like to try to help orient people to what we're going to be talking about. So give us a little bit of an overview of what our episode today is going to actually be about, John. Well, uh, Tools for Life is um, basically what it is. It's, it's all the different tools that we uh, accumulate over our lifetime and we're able to use them and uh, benefit from them. Excellent. Well, we like to do things in threes, John, so when we were prepping for the show, uh, we, we talked about three things we're going to uh, help the, the audience focus on. So we're going to talk about stop lying to yourself, we're going to touch on it's not about you, and uh, then we're going to talk about the fact that it's all about the client. Uh, the, these are three things that sound pretty near and dear to my heart as well, so I think we'll, we're going to have a good chat about these things. So let's take that from the top, John. So when you say stop lying to yourself, um, what does that mean to you and what does it mean in the work that you do with the clients that you work with? Well, stop lying to yourself is basically what it is because we have a tendency to lie to ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're that good, we're that, you know, great, we're that beautiful, we're that, you know, and a lot of times it's just we're feeding ourselves lies. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to be truthful. And if you're not truthful to yourself, you can't help anybody. Absolutely you know? true, yeah. I mean, we are storytellers, aren't we, John? We, we can spin quite a yarn about uh, who we think we are. And, uh, you know, sometimes that just doesn't really jive with the facts, right? That's right. That's right. It's, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a blessing and, 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 a, and a shame at the same time that um, going through life, we just have that tendency to be better than what we really are, and we, and we can't we can't handle the truth. <laughs> yeah, I think I saw that movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, people do need to handle the truth, right? I mean, they need yeah. to figure out how to handle the truth, and uh, because listen, uh, you know, these things can start to sound cliche, right? But they're cliche for a reason because they really do make sense. I mean, and and the truth can set you free, right? I mean, whereas the story can trap you, it can block you from from achieving what you want to achieve in your life because your own story stands in the way. Sure, sure. One of the hardest things I had to do was look myself in the mirror and ask, who are you? Really, who are you? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? You know, and that's when the truth hurts. Because we have to be truthful about that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but if you don't build on that foundation of truth, no matter how much it hurts, then what are you building, right? I mean, you're you're building a very shaky uh, foundation for for whatever you end up trying to put on top of it, and it's probably going to fall down at some point. Sure, sure, you're not going to succeed. Yeah, you, know, no. you may succeed, you know, for a moment, but if you're looking for long term, you have to be truthful. So you have to stop lying to yourself. Now, I'm going to assume that your uh, the second point that we're going to talk about here is is actually pretty pretty darn related to the first point. So, you know, stop lying to yourself. Figure out who you really are. Look look at yourself in that mirror and and ask yourself those hard questions and really try to be honest in in your answers. So tell me about it's not about you. I mean, how does that come into play, and how does that, you know, come into the work that you do? Well, uh, again, you know, we think we're all that in a bag of chips, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we're not. Right. You know, and again, that has to be. You have to be truthful. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, I mean, that it's just that's just the way it is. It's. You're not as good as you think you are. Well, and it's and you're certainly not the only one around. I I, I always have this variations of this conversation with, with with people, John. And you tell me if this resonates with exactly what you're talking about here. But there's this really kind of interesting phenomenon, right? We are all living our life from ourself being the center, right? Because I look through my own eyes. I you know my entire world is through these two eye sockets. Yours are through your two eye sockets. But from right. my perspective, I'm the main character in the story and John Burke is a peripheral character in this story. But interestingly, at the same exact moment, the opposite is true for you. John Burke is the central character in your story and Mark Kosman is a completely peripheral character who's just showed up a few minutes ago into your story. So we can't both be right and we can't both be wrong. So <laughs> the truth has to be somewhere else, right? So it can't right. really be all about me, right? Exactly. And that takes us into the third. Right, which is that it's all, you know, in client work, whether you're a coach, whether you're a consultant, whether, you know, whatever kind of expert you are, where you're working in that, you know, that practitioner client kind of format, it's got to be about the client in that context, right? I mean, it's about you too, because to, you are that, you know, tool that's being used to, you know, make a change happen, but it's about the client as the focus, right? Sure, it's, you know, it has to do with sales, it has to do with, you know, any part of your life, relationships. You know, it's um, it's not about you because you're not all that. So if you can humble yourself, yeah. Well, that's the thing. I and mean, people people think humbling yourself is a is a, a sign of weakness, don't don't they? Yes, they do, and they are so wrong. Exactly. I, I'm with you 100 percent, John. I mean, I, I I will resonate with you completely on this point. You know, vulnerability is something that gives you massive strength, uh, whereas being a tough guy gives you a fragile exterior that can crumble at any moment. Yes. I've, I've been on that end. <laughs> Me you know, too. First personal experience, so you know, that's why I'm where I am today. Yeah, and I, I, mean, I think we both probably work with uh, any number of clients who who kind of are in that boat too, where they're, they're they're thinking that you know, letting themselves be vulnerable or letting themselves open up is is actually going to make them weak. Uh, and they, when they let themselves, they discover something pretty interesting, right? Yes, they do. So they, they realize how strong they are. Exactly, exactly, and and they're much stronger than they think they are. That's the other thing, right? Uh, you know, you, you you mentioned before at the beginning that we we kind of lie to ourselves, right? Uh, one of my most interesting lies that I like to catch myself in and help clients catch themselves in is when they're having that moment where they say I, I can't take it or I, you know I can't deal with this anymore and of course in the very moment that you're thinking the thought or saying those words you've already dealt with it right I mean it's already right. happened <laughs> sure so by definition you're stronger than you think you are that's for sure so John you have uh, an interesting background I mean uh, and we're gonna talk a little bit uh, more about that in a bit but uh, I want to give people a sense of how they can get in touch with you if they want to actually work with you in in coaching uh, so we've been talking about some of these tools for life, and just to kind of recap a little bit, we've been talking about three main things: stop lying to yourself. It's not really all about you, so open up. And then, you know, in this client, you know, uh, in this expert role, it's about the client. You know, and make them front and center about that. So, John, you're part of the the John Maxwell Group, uh, you know, coaching, and your website is uh, is is part of that. So it's the johnmaxwellgroup.com slash John Burke. That's easy enough, uh, and we're, we're going to put that up on screen so people can jot that down. 
And uh, what will people discover when they come to your website, John? Well, they'll, they'll find out that I have a multitude of uh, talents uh, from coaching, speaking, um, doing masterminds, mm -hmm. lunch and learns, workshops. Um, yeah, I bring a lot of uh, value. Excellent. Value uh, and wisdom. And I believe you actually have a, a, a bit of a free gift that people can, uh, can take advantage of when they get there. If they scroll down to the bottom of the page, they can just click on that image there, and uh, you've got a little bit of an offer for them that uh, yes. is, is pretty darn valuable, it looks like. Sure it is. Sure it is. So take advantage of that. Head over to johnmaxwellgroup.com slash John Burke, and you will connect with John Burke's uh, page there. You can connect. You can use the, the contact information there to get in touch with him. Take advantage of the, the free offer that you'll find there down in the, in the bottom right of the page. Uh, John, it has been great having you today as our expert guest here on the Expert Showcase. Thanks for your insights, and thanks for some of these tools for life. Thank you for having me. And another great Expert Showcase episode. Chris, what should people do right now? Yeah, if you're watching this and you're a coach or consultant, imagine what it would do for you and your business if you were a guest on Experts Showcase. And here's the best part. Other than, other than possibly increasing your business, an appearance on Expert Showcase is free. We give you a copy of your episode so you can use as marketing collateral, and we give you a a coaching session to go along with it to, to tell you how you can best market your episode and other tips and tricks about your your business so what you want to do is head on over to expertshowcase.com click on the big yellow apply button and apply to be our next featured guest on the expert showcase now if you're a coach or consultant and you've already imagined what having your own internet talk show will do for you then we want you to head to videocontent.agency and check us out, check our packages out, and get in contact with us. Let's see if we're a good fit, and let's see if we're the ones to produce you and make you the next star and have your own internet talk show. And until next time, uh, Mark, anything else? I couldn't have said it any better, so uh, just do what he said.